Chris here for Tenka Tech and welcome to the channel. And today's video is all about the great and ubiquitous for loop function. So let's get started now. In today's video, we will learn this new programming command that is as powerful as it is universal in programming languages. In general, that is. It is often used and not just for the Arduino. We call it for loop function. That is correct. Okay, let's just jump right into it and know that you may pause this video here to see my previous tutos before you watch this one. As from now on, I will assume that you are familiar with the basics. To make it easy to understand what the for loop is, let's make a crude comparison in order for you to have a general idea about the for loop function. We can say that life, like in programming, is full of repeating routine and subroutines. You know, we wake up, brush our teeth, and if we are not too late for a walk, we may have our breakfast. <laughs> I know, right? So, in programming, when we know we are going to use a routine again and again, it's a good practice to put that into a function that we can reuse when we want to repeat a function or subroutine multiple times in a row. Text, for example, when you are walking into a diner to order your favorite sushi, the chef has to make the sushi. And if he put them in a handy function, that he will call sushi so that he can reuse this function whenever he needs it. Let's say that there is a few more customers coming in, so the chef now needs to do six sushis in a row. Well, now there is no problem. The chef can just call the sushis function six times, right? Not a big deal. And you will have your sushi. But what if there is suddenly a rush and a thousand sushis are needed? It's where the for loop function saves the day and continually executes the same code multiple times, in that case the sushi recipe, or to loop through a routine until the stopping condition is met. And there are different types of loop programming languages and each have their own syntaxes. But all the loop have one thing in common and that the stopping condition. This condition is checked at every round and the loop will continue to run until the stopping condition is reached. To make it clearer, if our goal was to make four sushi, the stopping condition in the loop will specify to continue to make sushi until the four are made. This means that our loop will run four times, giving us four sushis. The for loop allows us to tell the computer where to start and provide a condition upon which to stop and all in a few and easy to read lines of code. And that's super tasty. <laughs> there is actually three sections in the for loop. The first one is where and how to start. The second condition is check to see where we stop the code. And the third one is a direction. For example, how the code is going to behave. You can think of the for loop as some sophisticated counter that allow you to set a start and end point with the possibility to add, subtract, compare, can even do some timing, so on and so forth. We will start with a simple code first to explain how this works, then we will put this into practice. Let's take a look. I'm not going to use too much variable this time because this is just to explain. If it doesn't make sense, not to worry. But we need at the minimum a counter. And what do we use as a counter? You can actually use whatever suits you. But for this demo, I will use X. Most of the people will use I or J. I will advise you to use a J instead of the I as if you look at it, I like L or 1 looks like and that creates problem further on for you to troubleshoot. It is hard to debug and rest assured that will drive you crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to use X as my counter. All I need to do now is inside void setup. We start by adding the serial monitor with a serial begin to set our trusty old 9600 volt rate here. We can then come down here. In the void loop, we will write our first ever word for. <laughs> it is green because it is a keyword in Arduino. Then we have a bunch of stuff inside some parentheses here. Now, there is three separate statements inside those parentheses and they are each separated by a semicolon. Not here, it's not a comma, a semicolon. It is important in the first statement. The first section looks kind of familiar as it is actually just a declaration and an initialization of the integer for the variable that we have named x and declare here. Then we set it to start at 1. So far, this is easy to understand. This first statement here is where we start and at what point we start at. Now, the next statement is the condition we are going to define where or when do we need to stop this for loop. This can be compared to an if statement that we saw the previous week. 
And this says if x is more than or equal to 10, we will stop this for loop. In another word, if that condition is not met, then the for loop will continue to execute. I am not sure what you mean. Don't worry, I'll show you. Well, in the first stage, we declare x. Think of it as if it is the sushi recipe. To start, we will have one sushi recipe. Then, in the second stage, we ask how many sushis have we made? One for now. Shall we proceed to make more then? To find out, we compare that to how many sushi must be made before we stop. And here, it's 10. So, we continue. The third and final stage, in our case, is to print how many sushi or sushis we have made. One for now. And this goes into the serial monitor. We apply the delay, we make the sushi and add it into our order. And the way for the Arduino to add the plus one sushi in our code is to add the plus one here to the X at the end. And this will go after the sushi recipe. So that little plus one here means we add one to X. This then become X equal two. At this point, and if you did not guess, we execute the first stage again, and this will give us, back to the first stage, we have declared x, it's now equal to 2. We proceed to the second stage, we ask how many sushi have we made so far, it's 2. So shall we proceed to make more? Hell yeah, we do, because we compare that to how many sushi must be made before we stop, and that's the third stage, in our case, we print how many sushi we have made, so far is 2 until now, and we print that into the serial monitor, apply the delay, then we make the sushi and add it to our order. It then becomes x equal 3, so on and so forth, until we reach x is equal 10. At this point, since we are in the void loop, this will bring us back to the top of the code here, where we will start all over again the first stage and proceed like this until the Arduino is stopped or run out of power. I hope it is now easier for you to understand, as we do have a few more things to go through. Like if we change x, it's equal to x plus 1 here, but we could have as well written x plus plus instead and that would have been perfectly fine and a lot easier than just to write the whole x is equal to x plus 1. But I will try to make it slow for us. Note that this little plus sign, it is not specific to the for loop only. No, actually, it is a really nice little piece of ND code that you can use to add one to a variable. If you want more than one, then you have to go to x equal x plus whichever. But if it's one, we can shorten this using plus plus instead. Note that they are interchangeable if you want to add one. We know now the theory, so let's send this to the Arduino and see how this works. I open the serial monitor and ta-da! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, and you noticed with the second print line here, we have a nice space. Okay. Let's close this and see what's happened if we mistakenly got the wrong input for that. I will change the bigger than here to a smaller than and compile it. Now let's check with the serial monitor. As you can see, there is nothing. And that is because 10 will always be not equal to 1. The loop is still happening, mind you. Alright, so let's revert this back to the original and try something I spoke earlier. That is to shorten this string here by using the plus plus command to demonstrate that they are interchangeable. As usual, send this and check. There you see, it works. It's the same, but it's faster to type, much like a flying McQueen. Ciao. Inversely, we could write x minus minus, and this will allow us to dim an LED or slow down a motor, because when we do this, it means we are going in reverse or subtracting. Let's compile this and verify. Yeah, that looks good. I think we got it. Minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, minus 9, minus 10, and... Oh! No! God, no! What's happening? Here. It's like the Groundhog Days. This will never stop. But why? It's simple. It's never stopped because everything lesser than 10. So what do we have to do here? Well, in the first stage, we must change x and it must be equal to 10. 
we don't start by one because we want to go down. So we put it at the maximum we want and here it's 10. X in second stage, we have to change it to bigger or equal to one. And this means that since we want it to start back at 10, okay, we have to set where to stop. And this is, we want to be at one. You can set it to whatever you want, but for us it would be one. And this will be useful in the way that, let's say, we want to know how many sushi we did and how many we must do to fulfill our order. Then the third stage becomes X minus minus. Let's send this to the Arduino and execute the code to see what will actually happen next. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whoo! Yes! We did it! But wait, there is more. We can change some parameters to define this part as to when the loop is going to stop. We also have the ability to change the iterator and decide how fast it is going up or down. Do we want a multiplier, an addition, or is it going down with a subtraction? All of these are up for modification. We can also use variable to replace this number that give us even a greater control over how some things look. Let me know in the comment down below if you want to know more about the abilities to change the parameters with the multiplier, divider, so on and so forth. Now, this is all for the basics, but let's see how we can actually use all that we learn to our advantage. Here, we set up our variable, starting with a green LED, we call it G LED, and we have it into pin 3. Then, we have the yellow LED, we call it Y LED, we have it into pin 6, both into the Arduino. They will be blinking for half a second, so 500 milliseconds for each color. Then, we create in our void setup our pin mode for both LEDs. We also always want to run the serial monitor with the board at 9600, and this is for debugging at first. Then, in the void loop, some blinking sequences. Let's start with the green LED first. Then we will simply copy and amend it as necessary for the yellow LED and usually this is where we make some mistakes. But let's load that and see what's up. Here we go. Well, no surprises, it works. You can see they have five blinking each. Now, based on what we learned in this lesson, we will make this sketch more efficient and less prone to errors, you know, when you copy. Let's select all and paste the new code in. Yes. It is streamlined to make it easier for us to follow. And you can see we added under the timing for both LED here a new set of blinks. This will allow us to assign the number of blinks for each LED easily and independently. The biggest change, however, is here in the void loop where we apply our newly learned for loop function. You can see it is easier to follow now and as we know what this new function does, we will send this to the Arduino and test that. Et voila! Okay, it works the same but looks much better. Don't you think so? So in today's video, we learn what is the for loop function, how does it work, how to set it up and somehow how to troubleshoot it. All right, that is it for today. Thank you for watching the video. And just to let you know, I started the Patreon where if you want, you can support me. And again, if you enjoy it, you know what to do. You can do your youtube things, like if you want to, subscribe, you may as well. Or you can also press the bell icon if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. However, if you do not like this video, simply leave a comment down below and tell me why it's so. I will try to improve for you guys. Stay safe and bye now!